પરમાત્મા સિપ યોગિની સિપ સુદીપ બારગવા ઓડિયો વિડીયો સુદીપ થેન્ક યુ વી હેવ અ ગુડ વાઈફાઈ સિપ નિમી સંતાની સિપ બ્લેસ સિપ આત્મતરાય સિપ ગૌતમ સિપ સંગમ સિપ દાસી સિપ રૂપ સિપ બ્રિકો સિપ સગાઈ સિપ ચંદ્રકાંત સિપ ગ્લિકો સિપ રેખા પરવાની સિપ સુનીલ ચિત્તર આઈ થિંક ગૌતમ ઇઝ ઓન એન્ડ ઓફ સિપ રૂ માતાજી વેલકમ ટુ ધ ક્રિકેટ સેશન સિપ કુંદન સિપ અશોક નિચાની એન્ડ આઈ ડોન્ટ સી એની અધર પિક્ચર્સ વેલકમ માય ડિયર ફ્રેન્ડ્સ and we are on to a, a, we are going to start a cricket match uh the administrator will put put the picture of the subject how is life like the game of cricket so i i thought for a change we will do a spinner we will have an enlightenment talk which has got to do a little with cricket and uh let us get into an exciting kind of a discussion you know no no call of ours goes waste you can be sure of that no 30 minutes of ours has gone waste and i hope you will agree that no 30 minutes should go and ever will go waste we want to make the best so who who wants to uh, i see blicko's hand going up so blicko how is life like the game of cricket yes blicko see you see you so cricket is a game and life is also a game good ultimately nothing is true game is over life is over you don't take it seriously that's a temporary phase and life is also temporary phase this is one point i want to make good so uh, the way blicko says he says cricket is a game life is a game <laughs> he gives a very but there's much more depth why is life like the game of cricket who would like to uh, who would like to give us more depth there's so many beautiful the cricket is the indian game right so uh, game of cricket everybody in india if you tell them cricket if when the cricket match india comes to a, stand, a stop so why is why is life like the game of cricket i got the suggestion yesterday to have this uh, talk why is life like game of cricket and i thought it's a great idea so i i normally it's, it may look like i'm being very casual no you'll be surprised how beautiful the session is going to be today you'll be surprised who who knows cricket anybody knows cricket nobody knows shom sir ji ah ashok ji sir shom bolo ashok sir ji cricket is my favorite game ah tell me how is life like a game of cricket then it is life is like a cricket game because in cricket we have to plan before the game starts okay we should have a game game plan okay we should see the opposition strength uh but And suppose but, uh, i am a batsman yeah so i will see the strength of the opposition their game plan who is going to ball to me bowling means the balls they will be different type of balls they will be throwing at me correct that will be my mind that huh. will be my mind very good but now i have to use my intellect to how to face that ball <laughs> interesting ashok nijani i don't i don't think many people are cricketers in this group i think ashok nijani the first one coming with some uh, but ashok remember one thing life doesn't turn out the way you plan it Uh, so don't think that unlike a game of cricket which you can plan you don't know in life who's going to bowl a bouncer you 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 don't have a clue no, who no, sir, the ball is going to come on you but our aim should be on the ball let we miss the ball no no problem don't give up stand there stand on the field learn what is going to ball avoid the bouncers what you can hit you can you should it very good hamara like lakshya jo hai hamara lakshya jo hai it's a target they we have to reach i never, like never mind we have that target to reach facing each ball that the ball is the mind the balls what they are throwing is our mind what their thoughts are coming ah now the balls are like thoughts ashok thoughts one 
one yes, thought, sir. second thought, third thought, fourth one thought. thought. Man, you can, but we have to some, use our some... intellect to. Huh? We have to use our intellect to face them. Not only face them, you have to hit sixers. Sixers. How do you? To how reach do you... the target. So, so it's a very interesting. It's a very interesting session for those who like cricket. What? How is life like the game of cricket? I don't see anybody still wanting to uh, Shivoham. speak. Yes. Shivoham. Is it, is it in life. Yes. Yeah. In life, one never knows when he will die. Good. A batsman also is not knowing when he will get out. Get bored. Very good. So both are uncertain as far as living or continuing playing is concerned. Very good. So uh, you all know Samatma, you know cricket or you don't know cricket, Samatma? You know a little bit? Ashok Chotwani? You know cricket? Huh? Bl uh, Bliss, you know cricket, Bliss? Or you don't know cricket? Cricket is like baseball. Ah, like Indian baseball? Yeah, like baseball, yeah. but Indian baseball. Yeah, I understand. You understand? Huh? So so let us let me quickly give you a small analogy. Sunil Chittal wants to speak first. Then I'll give you my analogy. Sunil Chittal, yes, sir. Namaskar. Shivam In cricket, the, the outcome is always uncertain. Okay. And secondly, it all depends upon the team 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 effort. A single single batsman or a single bowler mm. cannot do anything. And in life? So, so life is also like that. As a human being, we are a social animal. We have to live <laughs> okay. within the society. And whatever you do, the outcome is uncertain. So it's the Leela. It's actually, you can see the Leela getting played, and you have to enjoy the game. Whether you get either you hit a century or get a run out, or you got run out because of somebody else, you enjoy the game. And and uh, as uh, uh, Ashok Nichani said, you should always try to hit your target. Good. I think there are many more things that we can talk about cricket and life. But yesterday, somebody was having a discussion with me, and when we were having a spiritual discussion yesterday. This idea came about how life is like a game of cricket. And let me tell you why I chose this topic. I think yesterday or day before yesterday. Today I'm in Kashmir. Uh, with the grace of the divine, we have good signal. We have a new Wi-Fi connection. But when we were having this discussion yesterday or day before yesterday, we said life is like a game of cricket because... There I have one answer on this. Yes. Yes. Glico says cricket is like life. We should accept both equally winning and losing. <laughs> you know, sometimes you, some of you are giving answers which are very good answers, but not spiritual answers. So I don't want to comment on the non-spiritual answers because I'm trying to look at the spiritual. Every time I talk to you, I'm not here to do time pass. We are not doing time pass. Don't have the slightest no. thing that we are doing cricket yes, time pass. No, 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 no. So why are we? Rumata ji, you know cricket, Rumata ji? Yes, ji, Guru ji, thoda bhoat, jyada nahi, thoda bhoat. Guru ji, I... Bat and ball is... Guru ji, Bat and ball is jyati hai na? Yes, ji. Guru ji, I think jo century banate hai, they are on the top of the world, running after achievement and success. But that is temporary phase. But that is temporary phase of life. So... Every, every... Every Sudhir Gavaskar will be soon forgotten. We only remember our own cricketer who is 100 years old, 200 years old, 300 years old. If you ask the youngster of today, Don Bradman, maybe Don Bradman view is Sudhir Chittal may know, but the young, young generation may not know who is Don Bradman. Okay, my dear friends, in our discussion of a spiritual discussion, what we realized, life is like a game of cricket because in a game of cricket, you have to bat. You have to bat. You cannot say I will not bat. If you don't bat, if you try, if you don't, if you refuse to bat, Sudhir Bhargava, if you refuse to bat, you will get bowled out. And if you get bowled out, you have to come back in second innings. Huh? Just like in cricket, there's second innings. In life also, there is second innings. Will you remember this clearly? So you have to have you will only in life cricket, there only is one first inning and second inning. But in life, the innings will continue inning after inning after inning after inning. One. Second. In life, just like in cricket, you have to bat. Karma is bowling balls. In, in, in the bowler, is karma. 
you don't know bouncers. Suddenly, when bouncers coming, suddenly when Google is coming, when spinner is coming, when fast ball, when slow ball, what are these balls that are coming in life? These are all karma. What is happening in life is karma is bowling. You know, in cricket also, first you bat one side, six balls. Then you turn. Empire changes, you go to the other side, six balls. So in life, first side bowling is karma. Karma, 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 karma. Ashok Dichani, you're paying attention. Second side yes, bowling is thoughts. Thought, 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 yes, thought, thought, thought. So life is a combination of karma and thoughts that are bowling at us. And we have to bat. You cannot tell karma, no, no, I will not bat. If you don't bat, you will get bowled out. If you get bowled out, you have to come back in next innings. So you cannot refuse to bat. Some people ask me the question, why should I live? I say, shut up, don't ask this question. You cannot ask the question, why should I live? You can ask the question, how to live? Because many people who ask the question, why should I live? Then they get depression, anxiety attacks, suicide thoughts. No, no. Life is a challenge. You have to, it's a game like cricket. You have to go there, whether it's West Indian for Andy Roberts uh, bowling at you or uh, Imran Khan or whoever is bowling at you, you have to face it. You can put pads, helmet, gloves, whatever you like. But you've got to face the match. And what about those thoughts that attack us? When thoughts go on bowling, one bowling, one thought, negative thought, thought of fear, thought of worry, thought of jealousy, thought of insecurity. You know, life is about batting these thoughts. If we don't bat these thoughts, we'll be clean bold, we'll be back to pavilion. Again, we have to come back. Therefore, I loved the idea of this life in the cricket match. Normally, I would not, when somebody suggested to me, I would have rejected it. But I like the idea. I like the idea. How is life like a cricket match? So we have to learn to bat. And we have to learn to win the match. Winning the match is moksha. Winning the match is mukti. Some people are prisoners. They are imprisoned by ignorance, right? They don't know. You know what happens in cricket if you're ignorant? You know, Ashok Dichani will know. If you're ignorant and you, you put your bat out like this, the, bottle, the ball will stick your bat and go to the wicket keeper and empire will declare you out. Because you ignorantly... You ignorantly put your bat out. Now some idiotic thought comes to your mind and you idiotically accept that thought. And that thought becomes a dirty word. Sometimes you speak some bad word. You do some wrong thing. You can't take it back. Cricket is like that. Cricket, you put your bat out. The ball touches your bat. The fielder catches the ball. You are declared out. And if you are declared out, you go back to pavilion. My dear friends, cricket is a beautiful game to analyze life and to live it spiritually. The goal is to win the match. To win the match, hit every ball in the right manner with patience and persistence. And you know what? If you want to be a winner of cricket, you need a good coach. In life, you need a good guru. In cricket, if you don't have a good coach, you will fail. In life, if you don't have a good guru, you will fail. Therefore, it's very, very important for us to understand that life is like a game of cricket. It's a beautiful analogy. And we have to face, most important, don't re we have to face the ball. Six balls of karma, six balls of thoughts. Six balls of karma, six balls of thoughts. They keep on going. They keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on. Till we are out. And if we are out, then we come back second innings. We have to be the world champion. World champion means we must not, not about getting the shield. It is about attaining that state of moksha. So I'm giving this analogy to you and I'm trying to inspire you to ask me questions about life. Over to you. Who would like to ask questions about life? And whether you agree to this analogy or you want to have your own opinion and you... Chalo, Sudhir Bhargava, what is your opinion about cricket and life, Sudhir Bhargava? Yes, sir. I do feel a lot of similarities. A couple of them, I'll have to bring in the concept of duality because that's how oh. I think. Although it's a dual thing, it's like separating me from God. But I always keep reminding myself that God is on the non-striker's end. So, in cricket, we say that you have to trust the caller's, uh, the partner's call. At times, you have to take a run. You cannot see the ball. The partner can see the ball. 
you have to take that on you have to trust him in the same way we should also trust god if god has asked me to do something let me blindly trust him and go for the run because he is the one who sees everything i may not be able to see that beautiful so beautiful analogy and secondly if he is on the non striker end if i am in trouble the only thing i have to do is to take a single and give him the strike so i don't have to worry about what happens in the match sachin tendulkar is on the other side so why should i worry about it? beautiful that's how i look today, at today you are today you are speaking in consciousness <laughs> <laughs> today today you are speaking in full consciousness to the bhargava what amazing thoughts because these thoughts are coming out of your consciousness see the problem is this if you are supposed to the bhargava sometimes your mind bowls a bouncer huh? and you don't realize to the bhargava and you go forward to the bouncer what happens to the bhargava then you will be in the stretcher life then if the bouncer hits you to the bhargava you will be in a stretcher and there will be people putting bandage on your head because you put your head out for a bouncer many times we the people we are foolish when the bouncer comes what you must do you must duck let the bouncer pass some people are foolish some people when the bouncer comes they think they are too smart they put their head forward like this uh, the bouncer hits and when the bouncer hits we are back to pavilion who else good very good sudeep bargava gave some good analogy anybody else is good i want to give an analogy about life and cricket or you can ask me any question about life over to you girish and administrator i believe that you get any interesting things you can speak up yes administrator girish says cricket played ball by ball life moment by moment excellent beautiful and he also oh, look says look at analogy huh? girish says you cannot live life other than tuck 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 ball by ball ball by ball you cannot you cannot bite life like an you have like they say you cannot eat an elephant in one bite so life is all about living it moment by moment and sometimes i'm getting a thought here many of us we take life too seriously we spoil our life because we don't realize life is a game i think some who started blicko started this i think blicko started with this beautiful analogy A life is a game. Don't make it a shame. Life is a game. Don't make it a shame. Learn to smile. It'll only last a while. Learn to smile. It'll only last a while. And if you don't learn to play the game, then you're going to cry and look at the sky and ask why, because you never learned to play the game. It's only a game. Finally, everybody had to go back to pavilion. batsmen and bowlers india pakistan finally after all the cheering and after all the game is over you go back and the game is over finally we have to get moksha we forget the purpose we forget the purpose of life the purpose of life is liberation the purpose of life is unification and you keep on fighting and I'm, some people on the cricket field you see they hit each other some batsmen and bowlers have you seen they hit each other one one batsman got so angry he took the bat and hit the umpire empire gave him out he went and hit the empire <laughs> out of anger so it teaches us sports always teaches us how to be a sportsman a good sporting spirit we people human beings don't have it in life yes sudeep bargava you want to say something yes sir one more analogy that i just thought of was that in a test match at times you get into a position where you have to declare your innings so you have to feel that okay enough runs on the board now i think i need some time to ball out the opposition so you have to declare an innings some captains are not able to do it because they become a bit fearful what if they are able to chase this much let me make another 50 let me make another 100 that's how life also goes we are always running behind okay suppose i've got some 10 lakhs i'll say yeah one more lakhs i think that should be enough at the moment i get 11 then oh, let me get one more lakh but that enough never becomes enough and we keep running behind that and finally so we lose the match we should trust our senses because, and yeah. trust our intellect here because we are not detached we are attached to our score because Correct. we are attached to our score we want more score and we want more score and we lose the match so we are not able to come out of that materialistic cycle good good analogy so this good consciousness we have rajan yes rajan let's have your view shivan you are unmute please unmute please unmute sir sir oh, namaste guru ji Namaste. Namaste. Uh, in our life, uh, each thought is a ball. Correct. Trying to hit our stump, our uh, pure minds. 
and you block it with block it with my intellect that is what uh, an amazing so what an amazing analogy what look at what i don't no. know rajan correct me if i'm getting if i got you right rajan okay. says life is like a game of cricket because every thought is like a ball that's trying to bowl us out hit our wickets and we have to block each ball with intellect the bat is the intellect rajan says every time a ball comes padak padak either we block it or we hit it but many of us we get bold then we go old and tears only tears through the years we have tears through the years because we did not learn to use our intellect to block a foolish thought and the foolish thought got us bold we should not get bold so beautiful anything else you want to add rajan beautiful analogy thank you thank you see look at look at how beautifully the game of cricket is unfolding in this enlightenment talk so sometimes most people if you go and see in cricket what they are doing have you gone if you go to the cricket stadium the highest number of highest selling ice creams is in a game of cricket people sell millions of ice creams of course chips and popcorn and even these if you go to london beer bottles and uh, but the point is that the game has a lot to explain to us about how our life is you know many people they just live and they die and they don't know why when i talk to people and i try to explain to them enlightenment they go wow and i tell them today there was an air hostess in indigo and she said i said who are, yes who are you she said i am chaitra i said don't tell lies you are not chaitra your name is chaitra she said what do you mean i said when you were born you were chaitra she said no oh wow then she said the thing thinking she said what does it mean so i said what's your birthday so she told me some date she told me i don't remember some 9th of february i said don't tell lies ask your mother were you alive on 8th of february and her head her head went shaking ding 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 like this the point is so only what we are taught is akbar's conquests allah udin khilji what he did in school what did, what, what are we taught we are taught about how many planets are there in reality scientists only don't know how many planets are there and we are taught about where are the coal reserves and there are the reserves of we are taught all kind of things but nobody is taught enlightenment this is the problem we are taught to play cricket but we are not taught how to live life like cricket we are all told to win the cricket match to come big ah uh, you must be in the cricket team ah uh, ah uh, you must be in indian team ah uh, ah uh, you must be in the ranji trophy team only we talk of success and achievement who has taught us the meaning of enlightenment what is the use of achievement what will you do at the end of the day if you don't attain consciousness if you don't attain peace of mind if you don't know to live with bliss and joy and divine love then your life is a waste you may be a biggest cricketer in the world huh? finally like that one cricketer died he was 52 years old in, when he was having some party in bangkok shane won or whatever recently he died in bangkok yes sir everybody has to die everybody has to go back to pavilion but what is life so anybody has any questions on life administrator have you got any comments and questions before we continue can i see yes, sir i have two yes please and let's uh, and i want others on the call zoom today to ask me some tough questions about life we are talking about life not cricket cricket is over we are talking about life yes administrator it's still on cricket eh uh, yes. girish says coach is guru umpire is ishwara oh, wow. <laughs> coach is guru umpire is ishwara but girish that ishwara is inside you only it is your own conscience that is ishwara you don't have to look at the empire here in this case empire and you are duality in cricket in spirituality there is no duality correct correct grish so you have to don't wait for the empire to give decision grish you give your own decision you have got consciousness to realize good good analogy administrator continue parvati amma says guru's words we have to catch firmly and hold on to like holding a catch in a cricket match 
<laughs> See, look at Parvati Amma giving. Parvati Amma, you also watch cricket or what? I'm nice, nice to hear Parvati Amma. Parvati Amma is <laughs> saying that, you know, many people, I know how many of you don't know cricket. Many people, they get a ball. The ball is coming in the hand. Suresh Ji, tell you, remember this? The ball comes in the hand. And as you're getting the ball, and the, and the commentator says, Or Tunil Gavaskar ko out ho gaya. And then he says, Lekin catch drop ho gaya. And he's not, not out. So the Guru, Parutyama says, the Guru gives Gyan. We get the Gyan in our hand. And then like a drop catches. That's why in the game of cricket, though I was a cricketer when I was young. I know how many, how many of you heard, learned, learned this. They say, catches, they lose matches. Huh? Catches, lose matches. Because if you lose catches, then you will lose matches. Good. Anything else? Can we get on to questions about life administrator? I hope we have got any more questions. Last one is Parvatiyam again. Consistent yes. practice, sadhana needed. Very good. Parvatiyam, look at Parvatiyam's participation. I am so happy. Parvatiyam says we need constant practice. Nobody can win a game of cricket without sadhana. Means without cricketers would get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning, go, tie a ball. Ball will be hanging. Tuck, 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 tuck. Or they would go to the nets and they would bowl. They would bowl and bowl and bowl and bowl till such time that they get the right spot where to hit by where to drop the ball, how to get the batsman out, how to get the spin ball, how to move the ball, in-swinger, out-swinger. So Parutiyam also is talking of that. You need a lot of strength. Thank you. Oh, let's get to some questions on life. We have 10 more minutes before we close. Who can ask me some good questions on life? Where you are caught in a situation, some interesting questions on life, where you don't know how to solve or somebody doesn't know how to solve a problem. Do you know? Or what stops us from enlightenment? What holds us back from this journey of life? Rajan. Yes, Rajan. Uh, Namaste, Guruji. Uh, I still have a doubt. If you, if I do good karma, I will rebirth. If I do bad karma also, I will rebirth. So how mocha is possible? How? Mocha. Or the escape from rebirth. How so, escape from it? So my dear Rajan, if you do good karma, you will be born in a good life. Uh, yes. If yes. you do bad karma, you will be born in a bad <laughs> life. So today, suppose today somebody is having everything good in their life, it is good karma. Okay. If something bad is happening in life, it is bad karma. Okay. So as long as there's good karma, bad karma, good karma, bad karma, good karma, bad karma, we will continue being reborn, 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 reborn. Correct, Rajan? Now suppose you realize who is doing karma? Rajan. I am Rajan. I am doing karma. One day Rajan will die or not? Yes, die. Has to die, no? Yes, die. What about your karma, which is not settled? Uh, karma, karma remain. So then, what? Who? How you will settle that karma? Rebirth. You have to come back for rebirth. But yes. suppose you realize, I am not Rajan. I am the Atma. I am not Rajan. I am the Atma. And then you realize it's not my karma. I am not doing any karma. Prabhu is doing everything. I am only a divine instrument. Then there's no karma. Oh, then the karma is not yours. Suppose from today onwards, suppose right from today, Rajat, suppose right from today you promised, Oh Lord, huh? You think like that. Oh Lord, I am like a flute. I am not playing the music. Somebody else is playing the music. So I am not, I am not Rajan doing this work. Oh Lord, you do. My hands belong to you. The moment Rajan, the karma is not yours, then there's no karma. Yes. If there's no, no karma, then what will happen, Rajan? If there's no karma, then? No, 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 no rebirth and uh, no, no settlement of karma. And then what happens if no rebirth? What happens? 
uh, moksha. Moksha. Now, Raja, sure. what about what about the karma for the last hundred years you are having? What about that? I don't know. <laughs> Rajan, the moment you realize you are not Rajan, then all hundred years karma is gone. Ah, yes, yes. Okay. All hundred janmas, whatever janma you are carrying and carrying and carrying, because who is carrying? That fellow who is Rajan, that fellow who is Rajan is carrying karma. One, one karma, second karma, third karma, fourth karma. You are carrying a one janma, second janma, third janma, fourth janma. When you realize, I am not this body, I am not the mind, I am not the ego, I am the atma, then what happens to all the karma? Karma will disappear. Disappear. Finished. Jeevan Mukta. You attain okay. Moksha. Okay. Thank you. Clear? Clear, not clear? Oh, yes. yes, now it is clear. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Pliko. Shivam. Shivam, sir. Actually, I got the answer from uh, uh, the question before uh, you explained. But still, uh, there is one uh, small doubt. Yes. That after knowing all this thing and trying to, you know, be in consciousness. Still, why this mind is come comes like you know like you phoenix and then it it drags you and it becomes hard sometimes for me at least I'm talking about my experience that after going into the wrong way you realize and you come back. This is why this cycle is happening. Why the mind is not getting strength. How to get mind, uh, you know, in control uh, all the time? That is, uh, I'm facing difficulty. Bliko, this problem is with 99.99% of the people. The problem is not only with Bliko. You are better off. You are better off than many, many, many people. Now, let me, let me explain to you. The way to enlightenment and to liberation is the magic. The more we have deep yearning, mumukshutvam, if we have that deep yearning, mere dil mein bas ik tum hi ho. if we seek God, if we love God, if that is what we yearn, then we are given the strength to transcend the thoughts. Then we should not live in the mind state. We should live in consciousness state. Bliko, why do I tell you every hour switch off for one minute or two minutes or five minutes? We are not able to do it, Bliko, because the mind is the master. The mind has to be cremated, killed, destroyed. The, if this is the and this is the only way. There is no other way, Bliko. There is no other way. There is no shortcut. Are you, are, is there any other? There's no. I cannot give you some other way to do it. There is only one way. And it is not a complicated way. I'm asked, okay, Griko, is it that I am telling you that I have given you the classes and you have got to learn another hundred more chapters in the lesson of life or I have finished giving the class to you? What do you think? Do I have to still teach you many more things or I have finished teaching? Now you need, we need, we need continuous, uh, uh, continuous lessons and continuous repetition. No, but have you finished the curriculum? Have you finished the course Course, or we have not finished the course? Uh, I can say it is finished, but we, we need to practice it more and more. Correct. There is nothing new needed. Nothing new, yeah. What your, Liko, what we need, we, we think that moksha is very complicated. When I explain to Rajan now, it looks like, Are, that's all. So easy to get moksha. Yeah, it is so easy. But to still the mind, I uh, put a status in WhatsApp today. The mind is like a lake. The mind is like a lake. Can you still the lake? Can you stop the lake from ripples? From Can you stop the ocean from having waves? No. So the challenge is how to still the mind. How to be in consciousness. That's why we talk about taming the monkey mind. First, we have to tame the monkey mind. Then after we tame the monkey mind, we have to kill the mind. We have to destroy the mind. Oh, the mind is a, a mind is a killer. The mind is not a bouncer. The mind is a killer. In cricket, it's only bouncer. It'll hit you. It'll not kill you. 
but mind will kill you mind will complete so therefore what method i have given you all for attaining moksha liberation the method is only 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 that's all you don't have to learn anything more you don't need to go to another sorry to say you don't need another guru you don't need another scripture you don't need no everything for moksha is on this call you don't need anything more enlightenment is on this call provided you follow it all likho enlightenment is on this call provided you follow it all but we are not able to follow it we slip ha huh? we fall look at the quote how it can enlightenment is in this call provided we follow it all but we slip and we fall then we have to bowl another ball this is the problem okay so uh rohit yes rohit you know because if you am guruji ke one second blico before you go remember life will keep bowling balls at you karma will keep bowling balls at you don't think that balls will stop bowling and karma will stop bowling it's for you to become the right batsman what did who say who said rajan said who said it rajan said i i will hold a bat as an intellect keep that the, the moment brico you lift the bat what's going to happen finished then you will come and ask me now what to do no you lifted the bat am i right am, am i right or am i wrong yes, yes. if you are in a state of consciousness do you have a problem the one who is in a state of consciousness the jeevan mukta the sthit pragya the sthit pragya krishna tells in the bhagavad gita be a sthit pragya people read bhagavad bhagavad gita people read and read and read and read and read and read and then they say krishna i love you krishna <laughs> finished god they, they, that itself finishes it na sthit pragya being able to be in that state of steady inter if we live in consciousness come back to consciousness bliko Bharat yeah. living in consciousness. Your name says it all. You don't need anything else. Sorry, Rohit. Yes, and then we'll end with Sunil Chetan. Rohit. Yes. Shivam Guruji. So uh, since I'm new, new in this forum, uh, so Guruji, what are these ten steps you are talking about? I mean, uh, what what is this all course? Do you know uh, the magic? Do you know the magic of enlightenment? Yeah, magic. Uh, yeah, I heard uh, day before day before yesterday. M A G I C yeah. means Mumu Sutra. Mumu Sutra. Ask G G G G I for uh, I for ignorance and C for consciousness. Yeah. So these are the five simple steps which I call magic to enlightenment. Rohit, the problem is this, Rohit. The world has made it look like it's very complicated. You know, the world. If you just tell in the world, I am enlightened or I am seeking enlightenment, people think, "Oh, you are talking some nonsense." And some yeah. people who are supposed to be big spiritual gurus and leaders in this world, if you listen to them, they are talking everything else except enlightenment. They are talking Correct. complete garbage and not enlightenment. I don't want to give names or anything like that. Yeah. So what you need to do, you need to take Rohit. The simple, don't take ten steps. You stick to these five steps, Rohit. Mumukshutwa means deep yearning for liberation and the divine. Oh. Keep asking questions. Don't believe me. If I tell something, tell me no. Are you wrong? Question me again. Question me again. Question again. Question. Oh. Then guidance of the guru and grace of God, grace of ship, very oh. important. And I, the ignorance, that ignorance has to be removed with another I, intellect. you replace oh. i ignorance with i intellect okay and then you be in a state of consciousness the state of consciousness is where thoughts don't kill you thoughts enter your life like little fish that are swimming through the ocean don't about the moment a thought comes and the thought corrupts you you are dead it is just like eating one wrong food and then you have loose motions and stomach upset and food poisoning one meal can destroy your stomach one thought can kill your mind so just witness the witness whatever that comes you yeah, witness yeah, the be, mind or thoughts yeah. be the be a, be in consciousness be aware this thought that's coming to me this thought is wrong i will not listen to this thought sometimes we get trapped by the thought 
then we don't know how to reverse it. But the sooner we reverse it, the better, because the more, time, the more you go on one wrong thought and second wrong thought and third wrong thought, the three thoughts and the five thoughts become like wires in a cable, very difficult to break. So the wrong thoughts must be unwinded fast, rewinded fast. And that needs to be in consciousness. So, so you mean just to watch whatever thoughts are coming? No, not Don't only watch. Don't indulge. You must watch the thought, use your intellect to correct the action and be on this call every day because on this call every day you ask questions and get the answers. Don't, whatever busy you are, give this 30 minutes every day, come and ask questions, come and be part of the discussion. This is what sadhana required to, go, to move forward. Yes. Thank you. Last, last over to Sunil Chittal before which we will, then we will close. Sunil Chittal. Sure, sir. I just wanted to share my experience with this thought. Basically, uh, if you analyze or if you, uh, if you try to analyze, it is a self-talk which creates the thoughts. Otherwise, your senses are just giving you the impressions and your intellect interprets and you react. But what did you say? Your self-talk self self is giving the thoughts, you said? Yeah. So is the self what is the thought? It is the moment if you stop doing the self-thought, the self-talk, there are no thoughts. My dear Sunil, the self-talk is the thought. Yes. So if you stop doing self-thought and engage your mind with uh, with with some uh, what we call some other uh, alternate or, yeah. cons or uh, focus only on self, yes. then you don't do the self-talk. Moment exactly. you don't do the self-thought, there is no thought. And if there is no thought, there is no mind. So this it's is the, the whole practice. problem. It's the That's practice so which has to be done. Yeah. So what Sunil Chital is saying before the call comes to an end, thoughts, you know what thoughts are? They come and they keep talking to you in the mind. Thoughts are nothing but talk, the self-talk. And they convince us and they fool us. And they, they make us believe that, you know, what I am saying is right. And actually what the thought is saying is 100% wrong. And it's making us sink and blink and it's killing us. And the moment we lose the consciousness and we are trapped by thoughts, the game again back to pavilion, one more inning, we have to come back. Well, the time is over. We had a lovely session on cricket. Thank you. I appreciate your coming here. Bliko, anything important? Bliko, can we do it tomorrow? You want to say something? Uh, yeah, it is uh, It is same line. Uh, I think your mantra, stop it stupid, is very useful, but we have to use it right away. Stop it stupid is the best mantra of the world. If you want enlightenment, look at yourself in the mirror and say, enough. Stop it, stupid, stop it, stupid. Let me now stop being stupid. Thank you. See you tomorrow. <laughs>